Good morning and welcome to our Sunday morning service. It's so wonderful to have you join us. If you're watching us for the first time, please drop a note in the comments box below and let us know where you're watching us from. But today is a very, very special day. I know you know what it is, that's right. It's Mother's Day. So we just wanna take a moment right now and shout out all the mothers, all the amazing mothers at Faith Gospel, all the wonderful mothers that are watching us. Even if you don't go to Faith Gospel, we're still celebrating you today. And especially Faith Gospel's very, very own Pastor Christine. We just wanna let you mothers know that you are valued, you are appreciated, and you are deeply loved. Praise the Lord. Let's just bow our heads and close our eyes right where we are. Father God, we just give you all praise and all thanks. Lord, all glory be to you today. You are not a God that was made with human hands, but you are the God that made it all. What rest and what peace, God, we have in knowing that we are in fellowship with you, that we are your sons and your daughters. And Lord, not only that, but you call us friend. Father, your promises are yea and amen. And in those promises, we find great peace today. We thank you, Lord, that we know for surety that all things are working together for our good. We thank you, Lord, that even though many are the afflictions of the righteous, you deliver us out of them all. And Father God, as we come together, Lord, not physically, but in our hearts, Lord, in spirit, we are here to worship you. We are here, Lord, to say, here we are to worship you, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, and to give you our heart and to just say, Lord, have your will and way in our lives. Use us today. Let the church of God rise up in this time, in this season, and declare the word of the Lord. Be with us today as we fellowship and as we receive your word. We know that you have a word to speak to each and every part, to each and every person that is watching. And we give you thanks in advance for that, Holy Spirit. We love you, Jesus. Amen. This is my desire to honor you, Lord, with all my heart, I worship.
and keep you and that his favor would shine upon you all the days of your life. This is his word, this is his promise. He will forever be with us and our children and their children. Hallelujah.
Amen. We receive it this morning. Amen, church, right where you are. Receive every blessing. Receive every promise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mother's Day to all the mothers and soon to be mothers. My mother's name is Charlene Codling and I love her so much because she's an amazing role model for me. My mother's name is Doreen Knight and I love her because she's a great teacher. Happy Mother's Day mom. I love you so much. She gave life to me, she did cook for me, and I really love you. Happy Mother's Day. I love my mom because she cooks me food, she buys me what I want, and, and she, she helps, helps us with our homework. Happy Mother's Day. Thank you for my mom for being nice and me. I help her and she are helping me with all of my stuff. Happy Mother's Day, Mom, because the reason why I love you is because you raised me, you took care of me, and I love you so much. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I'm so grateful for having you. Thank you for giving me everything I wanted. You're a grateful mom. I love you so much. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day to all the Faith Gospel mamas out there. I just want to wish my mom, Carly Burrell, a very happy Mother's Day. I love you so much, Mom. God bless. Happy Mother's Day! Happy Mother's Day to all the amazing mothers out there, especially ours. Yes, and thank you, Mom, for all of your hard work. We truly appreciate it. Hello, my precious church family. What a joy to be sharing with you again. I just want to say we are continuing to uplift you in our prayers and in our thoughts. First of all, I do also want to say happy Mother's Day. I know this may be a challenging time for some of us uh, whose moms have gone on to be with the Lord. But my goodness, uh, what a joy to know that one day we're going to see them all again soon. What a great day that will be. I happen to come across a little poem regarding moms that I want to read to you. It really blessed me. Her love is like an island in life's ocean, vast and wide, a peaceful, quiet shelter from the wind, the rain, the tide. It is bound in north by hope, by patience on the west, by tender counsel on the south, and on the east by rest. Above it, like a beacon light, shine faith and truth and prayer. And through the changing scenes of life, I find a haven there. I'm not sure who the author of that was, but I pray that it will have blessed you as it did myself when I read it. Also, too, I want to say thank you so much uh, for your continuing giving to the church, uh, especially at this time. What a great encouragement and blessing it has been to us. It really keeps the church up and running. And again, as we've said many times before, we're able to continue to bless uh, those that are beyond these walls. And in fact, I just had a little call from Pastor David Calvert, you know, thanking us for being able to continue to support him on a regular basis. So thank you for that as well. Also, there are different ways to give. We mention it each week. Uh, you can either give to us through Interact or PayPal. Uh, also, you can phone in your credit card number. There is a drop box in the church or even drop by the church and uh, just uh, make your donation that way through electronic giving. We really deeply, deeply appreciate it. But above all, just know how much you are loved. When we say those words, we mean it from the depths of our heart. You are special to us. Know that we are praying for you. And at any time, if you need us, please call us. Uh, we're here at the church at 905-459-4673. So enjoy Pastor Brian's message as he shares with us today. And God richly bless you. Keep looking up. Jesus is coming soon. Amen. A pleasant good morning to you, church family. I just am I'm so excited to come into your home on this special Mother's Day. And uh, I just want to take this time to say Happy Mother's Day to all our mothers, our soon-to-be mothers. I just want to say that you have a wonderful, wonderful day. 
I'm so excited to share the word of God with you today. And uh, I hope and I pray that whatever I share and what the Lord has laid on my heart, it's going to be a blessing to you. So let's get right into it. If you have your Bibles, I trust that you do. Let's turn to the Gospel of Matthew. Matthew chapter 15. And I'm going to read from verses 21 through 28. And the Word of God reads, Then Jesus went out from there and departed into the region of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came from that region and cried out to him, saying, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely demon-possessed. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she cries out after us. But he answered and said, I was not sent except to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then she came and worshipped him, saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the little dogs. And she said, Yes, Lord, yet even the little dogs eat the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Let it be unto you as you desire. And her daughter was healed from that very hour. Let us pray. Father, I thank you that you are with us. I pray you're going to open our hearts to hear what you are speaking to us today. I pray, God, for all those that are watching, Holy Spirit, minister, illuminate your word to them. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen and amen. On this Mother's Day, I want to celebrate with you a ten tenacious and passionate mother. And in this story, I just want you to uh, take a different twist and look at it through the lens of a mother. Jesus, uh, he was leaving Jerusalem and he entered into the coast of Tyre and Sidon when he encounters this Canaanite woman. And a little backdrop of this is that in Jerusalem, the scribes and the Pharisees, they were accusing Jesus and his disciples for not eating with washed hands. Isn't that funny today that we are being so encouraged to wash our hands? But Jesus, it was not that important, but they were making a big scene out of it. Jesus said to them, you worship me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. And Jesus left Jerusalem and, and he was on his way and he was met by this woman. He encounters this Canaanite woman. And this woman, she came to Jesus very desperate. She was in a desperate state. But today, I want you to see this story through the eyes of this mother. You know, as a mother, you have to make up your mind about things. Because when mama makes up her mind, don't mess with her. And on the backdrop of that sentence, I just want to title this message, When Mama Makes Up Her Mind, Don't Mess With Her. Firstly, we see in this story that this woman was in tremendous trouble. This mother, she came to Jesus and she said to him, My daughter is severely demon-possessed. Isn't it funny that sometimes we think that our children, they have a little bit extra. 
They have something more than the normal kid. They have something extra and give you more trouble than anybody else. And, and this woman, she was no different. She came to tell Jesus that her daughter was severely demon possessed. I just want to tell that it's demon possession on steroids. You know, this mother, she was in trouble. And you might say that I thought it was her daughter that was the one in trouble. And I know, come on mothers, you know, uh, if your daughter is in trouble, uh, you are in trouble. Mothers, if your child is in trouble, you are in trouble. If your child is struggling, uh, you are struggling. If your child have issues, you have issues. And so it was, this mother's trouble, it is what brought her, it is what led her to Jesus. You know, trouble will get you calling on the name of Jesus. Trouble will make you pray. Trouble will help you to focus. I believe many people today will not be where they are if there was not some sort of trouble in their lives. The Bible says that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord, he delivers him out of them all. It is often the process God will use to get you to the promise. And I want you to know one other and on the other side of your trouble is your breakthrough. Can I say that again? On the other side of your trouble is your breakthrough. The other side of your trouble, the promise of God, it will be revealed. The devil, he wants to use trouble today against us. He wants to use trouble and to drive a wedge between us and our Lord. But you see, the devil is so dumb, he is just plumb dumb. But he does not realize that when folks like you and me, when we encounter trouble, we know how to call on the name of the Lord. Because uh, the Bible says uh, the name of the Lord uh, is a strong tower. Call on me uh, and I will answer you uh, and I will show you great uh, and mighty things. When we encounter trouble, uh, we know uh, in whom we believe uh, and we are persuaded. Uh, we are totally convinced uh, that he is able uh, to perform uh, what he has promised to us. In the text, in the Bible, as we read, the story, it says, uh, this woman came to Jesus uh, and she cried. That word is very interesting to me. Cry in the Greek uh, is the word uh, crazo. It is where we get the English word crazy from. Crazy, crazo means that she was desperate. She was uh, like a crazy woman. This mother, she was so desperate. She came after Jesus uh, and cried out uh, like a crazy mama. Hallelujah. I know some of us and some of our moms and our mothers watching. I know that some of your children can get you crazy. Some of our children they know how to get on your last nerve. But can I tell you this? The only reason they are like that is because they take after your husband. I can say that today, it's Mother's Day. Come on, you can type amen in the comment box right there. But, but desperate people don't care what you think about them because you don't know the drama that they are facing. You don't know their home situation. You don't know what they had to overcome to get to Jesus. 
So the next time you, you get upset about somebody's praise, the next time you get about, uh, upset about somebody's shout and somebody's worship, can I tell you this? Walk a mile in their shoes and then you can criticize. See, this mother, she laid aside her dignity because this was her baby. This was her daughter. And the first words that rolled off of her lips was this. Have mercy on me. Mercy is what you ask for when you know you are guilty. Mercy is what you ask when you know that you don't deserve the help, but you need God's grace to take you out of the mess that you are in. Have you ever found yourself in a moment that you know you don't deserve the help, but God's mercy helped you out of your mess? This Canaanite woman, she was so unworthy religiously unfit but that did not stop her from asking the Bible says uh, to ask uh, and keep on asking uh, to seek uh, and keep on seeking uh, to knock uh, and uh, keep on knocking uh, and you will receive uh, the answers to your prayer in that culture she was rejected on every level but she came to Jesus and, and she used the only words uh, that she knew uh, would get his attention. She said, have mercy on me. I don't deserve to be here. I don't deserve this breakthrough. I know that I am outside and I'm looking in. Uh, but Jesus, uh, look beyond my fault uh, and see my need. Here's what I know about mercy. Mercy screams the loudest uh, from a guilty man. Mercy is what you ask for when you know you don't deserve it. This is the very reason that Jesus came. He came to extend his mercy to us. Uh, we who did not deserve it. Then this woman, she cried out to Jesus. After she got Jesus' attention, she cried out to Jesus and she said, Thou son of David, this Canaanite woman, a pagan woman who does not know the traditions of the Jewish culture, this pagan woman, she identifies Jesus by his messianic name. Let me prophesy to somebody right now. Anointed women of God can see what others miss. Let me say that again. Anointed women of God can see what others miss. She saw Jesus. She saw in the Messiah. What all the other religious people, the scribes and the Pharisees and all the intellectuals of the day, the religious sect, they missed what this woman could have seen. See, these religious people, they were supposed to be prepared to identify the Messiah, but they were clueless and they were blinded by their own religiosity. But this woman's trouble, it gave her clarity to see through the religious jargon, the religious mess. She was able to see the Son of God, the Anointed One, the, the, the Savior of the world, the Messiah that this nation was looking forward to welcome. You might be watching me right now and you are looking for an answer. You are looking for a breakthrough. You are looking that God will come into your situation. You might be fearful. You may have some child, some loved one, a relative that is needing a miracle. 
Can I just extend this word to you from Matthew eleven twenty eight? 28. The Bible says, come unto me, all who are labored and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Jesus says, come, forget about what the situation looks like. He says, come unto me. And I declare over you today, uh, this trouble uh, will give you clarity uh, to see uh, what others are missing. Whatever you are going through uh, will cause you uh, to see uh, the anointed one, uh, the healer, the savior of the world today. Let's go on in the story. It says, my daughter is severely demon possessed this mother came to jesus and she says my daughter is severely demon possessed but i love what the first part of this verse it says it says my daughter she is full of the devil but she is my daughter she is crazy but she is mine she is struggling, but she is mine. She got issues, but she is mine. She is lost, but she is mine. She was saying, I am going to fight for what is mine. Can I say this to you mothers today? Don't give up on your children. Never disown them. When your child, they have gone so far away and they are at the end of themselves. I know you as mothers, you will be there to hold their hand and help them to walk out of the mess that they got themselves into. Mothers, I appeal to you today, fight for what is yours. Hallelujah. This mother, she came specifically for Jesus. In verse 23, the Bible says that the disciple says she cries after us. Let me make this clear and abundantly clear. She was not there to see the disciples. You can see how the disciples, they got swell headed. Pride can stick his head so easily into the situation. They were equating themselves with Jesus. She cries after us. She was not crying after the disciples. She was crying after Jesus. Can I tell you something today? Cry after Jesus. Cry after the one that heals. Cry for the one that saves. Cry for the one that delivers. There should be one attraction. And that is not the messenger. It is the message. See people today. They are falling in love with the messenger. And falling out of love with the message. Can I remind you today, the message, it is still Jesus. The message is still about the Savior. The message is still about the return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Don't look to the messenger. The messenger is just a mailman sent to deliver the message. And the message is still Jesus. This woman, she was completely unworthy. Jesus said, I have been sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But this mother, she was a Canaanite woman and she was not in covenant with God. This was going to take place later on in the chronology of Jesus' life. It will take place after the cross when Jesus will shed his blood for the Gentile as well as the Jew for the entire world. 
But that did not happen yet. And this woman, she was crossing the line because she knew Jesus was the only answer for her daughter. See, it did not matter that they were from different races. They were from different backgrounds. They were from different cultures. They were from different cities. But this mother, she needed an answer for her child. And she could not care less what was happening around her. But she was desperate enough to cross the line because she needed an answer for her daughter. Can I say this to you? When you get into a car wreck, it does not matter the color of the paramedic, whether he is red, whether he's yellow, black, or white, whether he's striped or polka dot. All you are concerned about is what the paramedic can help you do. If your son or your daughter or your husband or your wife is having a heart attack, you will not be concerned about the color of the paramedic. It is not about the container. It is about who is in the container. Hallelujah. Stop looking at the container. Stop looking at what pulls your, 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 your egos. It's not about the container. It is about who possess the containers. Hallelujah. This woman, she had a lot of issues. She was crossing the line. She was in an inappropriate place. See, it is not how bad this woman was. It is not her background that mattered. She was looking for help. The Bible tells us very clearly, it is the goodness of God that leads to repentance. It is the goodness of God that allows us to come before the throne of grace where we would find help in our times of trouble. It is the goodness and the goodness of God. It is still good today. This mother... She came to Jesus and, and she came to Jesus uh, as a worshiper. She came to Jesus and she said, uh, Lord, help me. Nothing can help you like worship. See, some people, they would have quit when Jesus ignored them. But not this mother. Some of you, you would have showed yourselves up and, and stomped off and, and snapped your fingers and throw your heads back and say, I don't need this. But she came to Jesus because there was nowhere else to go. There was nowhere else to go but to Jesus because she knew that Jesus was the answer for her problem. Because nobody can save like Jesus. Nobody can heal like Jesus. He is your present helper. He is still the name that is above all names. His name is still the most powerful name in all the earth. There is still only one name under heaven whereby men can be saved. That is the name of Jesus. And at the name of Jesus, every knee will bow and every tongue will confess. Because uh, there is only one name uh, that makes the devil tremble. Uh, it is only one name uh, that binds uh, the enemy. Uh, there is only one name uh, that loses glory on the earth. Uh, there is only one name uh, that is all uh, sufficient. It is the name of Jesus. Who else can we turn to? Only Jesus can handle this. Where can we go? Where or what can we do? Like Peter says, uh, where can we go? Uh, or who shall we turn to uh, when you have the words uh, of eternal life? I remember this old song that says, uh, 
Where could I go? You remember that song? Where could I go? Oh, where could I go? Seeking a refuge for my soul. Needing a friend to save me in the end. Where could I go but to the Lord? Church, where could we go but to the Lord? Because He has the answers we're searching for. See, the truth is today, when you get desperate, when you get desperate with your worship, there is nowhere else to go. There are some things only Jesus can fix. And if God had a witness, it would be for worship. And if you want to stop Jesus in his tracks, uh, begin to worship him. Because worship will get his attention. So he does not show up uh, in our complaints. But if you begin to worship him, uh, he will, you will stop him in his tracks uh, and he will say, uh, let me help you. You may not even know it right now. But you might be just one worship away from your breakthrough. Hallelujah. Worship is to declare worth. Worship is to declare worth. I wonder this morning, what is God worth to you? I know it's Mother's Day, I'm not only addressing mothers, uh, but whoever is listening to me right now, what is God worth to you? See, I worship God because I want to get God's attention. I don't worship to put on a show for you. Uh, I worship because uh, He is the one uh, that can change everything in my life. Uh. She came to the Lord and, and she said, Lord, help me because I can't help myself. This was a woman of worship. And now watch this. This is where it gets incredible. This story really gets incredible. Another implication for the word of worship is to prostrate one's self. It also means like a dog licking the hand of his master. And I know this morning, pride will say, that can't be me. Because we are too proud to prostrate ourselves and to lay before the master's hand. See, but when I get desperate enough, uh, when you get desperate enough, uh, when you get hungry enough, uh, you gotta silence the flesh, uh, you gotta silence your ego, uh, you gotta silence the pride, uh, and when you silence the flesh, uh, you will receive a mighty miracle from God. Make no mistake about this, God loves us, and He is so much more greater than we are. He is so much more powerful than we are. Compared to Him, we are just like little dogs. See, there is nothing about us that measures up to the greatness of our God. So we are like little dogs licking the hands of the Master. Hallelujah. See, this is where the story, it goes and it gets to a whole new level. Jesus, he answered and said, It is not good to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. Remember this, the worship is like a, a pet dog licking the master's hand. And look at this mother's response. She said, yes, Lord, but even the little dogs, uh, they eat the crumbs that fall uh, from the master's table. Hallelujah. 
See, some of us would have said, who are you calling a dog? You would have thrown your hands up in the air and walked out of there and said, you couldn't be talking to me. I don't need this. Don't talk to me like that. But you see, this mama was on a mission. She was in the spirit because she came worshiping. She came looking for an answer. She came out of her great need. And her faith was in a place where the flesh could not hold her back. See, if you want to get a miracle, you have to get out of the flesh and into the spirit. Zechariah chapter 2 and verse 13. Look at what it says. Be silent, O flesh, before the Lord, for he is aroused from his holy habitation. Hallelujah. You can have an amazing miracle if you can shut up the flesh. You need your flesh to be silent. When our flesh is silent, he is raised in his holy habitation. And where is his holy habitation? It is inside of you and I. He says, he dwells. We are his temple. He comes and he dwells inside you and us. The Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit, he takes up residence inside you and I. We are his holy habitation. This woman said, yes, Lord, the little dogs eat the crumbs from which falls from the master's table. She was saying, I may be a dog, but I'm your dog. Because the master will not deny his pet, he will not deny his pet dog, the crumbs that falls from the table. Hallelujah. Let me take this a little bit deeper. Let me take this and bring out some real theological expressions that are here. Let me take you deeper and introduce to introduce you to a, a Gentile mother who brought about a new theological extrapolation of a subject that is called chromology. This is chromology 101. See, she stands before you today as the first chromologist in the Bible. So, so let me tell you a little bit about uh, chromology. She said, even the dogs eat the crumbs uh, that fall from their master's table. See, this mother's uh, biblical interpretation and understanding uh, of chromology uh, was that she knew uh, whatever was in the loaf uh, was in the crumbs. She was absolutely faith filled because she was confident that whatever that was in the loaf, it was in the crumb. If there is a flour in the loaf, there is flour in the crumb. If there is salt in the loaf, there is salt in the crumb. If there is butter in the loaf, there is butter in the crumb. See, this mother said, I don't deserve the loaf, but Jesus, can you spare me a crumb? And, and here is what the religious people, here is what they missed. If there is salvation in the loaf, there is salvation in the crumb. If there is healing in the loaf, there is healing in the crumb. If there is breakthrough in the loaf, there is breakthrough in the crumb. If there is deliverance in the loaf, there has got to be a deliverance in the crumb for my child. Lord, she said, Lord, I'll take whatever you give me because whatever you give me uh, is enough uh, for my breakthrough. 
this woman, this mother, she was absolutely faith-filled. And Jesus said to her, Great is your faith. Your daughter is healed this very hour. Because of your personal trust, because of your confidence in my power, your child is healed in this very hour. This mother was in tremendous trouble. She broke down the walls of religion. She broke down the walls of race. She broke down the walls of worship. She was totally unworthy. She was absolutely faithful. She was desperate to see her child delivered. She said, if I can't get the loaf, I'll take a crumb. Because when mama makes up her mind, nothing is going to stop her. In closing this morning, you might be watching me. You might be tuned into this broadcast. And I want to tell somebody that's watching me right now. You have a need. You might be desperate. Your situation is desperate. But I want to tell you this morning, uh, somebody, uh, God uh, can touch you uh, in this very hour. God can heal you uh, in this very hour. God can change uh, your circumstance uh, in this very hour. He can change uh, the outlook in your life uh, right now in the name of Jesus. See, whatever is your trouble, whatever is your dilemma, Anything uh, you might be dealing with at the moment. It might be an unsaved child. It might be uh, uh, you want to have household salvation. Uh, maybe it's a husband. Uh, maybe it's a, a wife. Maybe it's family members. Jesus can touch them in this very hour. Or you might be looking at this program today. And you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior. You have not allowed Jesus to come and occupy the place in your heart that he rightfully deserves. I want to tell you, you did not tune in today by chance. It was a divine appointment that you look at this program today. And as you are hearing the sound of my voice, I want to ask you, friend, would you give your life to Christ? Would you surrender your life to the one that can give you eternal life? Who can remove the fear? Who can remove uh, all the things in your past and give you a new beginning? If you are a person like that, would you repeat this prayer after me? Would you put your hand on your heart? Uh, take your right hand and put it on your heart uh, and say it. Lord Jesus, forgive me of my sins. I believe, Jesus, that you died and you rose again. You shed your blood for me. And I promise that from today, I'm going to serve you. Change my life, oh God. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. I just want to welcome you into the family of God. You have been born again. I just want to encourage you to find a Bible-based church. Find a Bible. Begin reading the book of John. And, he's, and the Bible is going to help you with your walk. Or you can call us at this church that we're preaching from. We'll be able to help you and encourage you. Also, I want, I want to pray. For anybody that's watching right now, you might be sick in body. You might be going through a rough time mentally. You might be discouraged. You might be down. You might be depressed. You might be feeling the weight of everything that is going on around us. But I want to tell you this morning, Jesus 
is our burden bearer. The Bible says to cast our cares upon him because he cares for you. Cast your burden upon him. He would lift it off your shoulders. Let him carry your, your burden. Do not carry it by yourself. I pray this morning in the mighty name of Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus took stripes on his back so that you can be healed. I believe in supernatural healing. I believe that Jesus can heal you in this very hour. It does not matter the sickness. It does not matter the ailment. It doesn't matter because today is Mother's Day. Every day is the Lord's Day. And He's able to do exceeding abundantly above, above all that we can ask. I just pray for you right now. Be healed in the mighty name of Jesus. Be healed in your body in the name of Jesus. Every physical ailment, be healed in Jesus' name. Emotional, mental sickness, I command it to be healed in the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit, you are omnipresent and you, are, have, you, have, you possess omnipotent power. And right now, you are touching lives. Even through the airwaves, you are touching individuals. You are filling people with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Hallelujah. I want to pray for all our mothers, mothers. I pray for them right now. Lord, just touch them, strengthen them, encourage them, I pray. Lord, even those who have lost mothers and might be a hard day for them today. Lord, I pray for your grace. I pray for your comfort. I pray for your peace. I pray for your strength. Oh God, your loving arms will just wrap around them. That they will know that they have a heavenly father who cares and who appreciates them. Keep them, oh God, in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on you. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen and amen. I just want to close by saying happy Mother's Day again. And God bless you and enjoy this wonderful day. Amen.